guys we are back in the flip that zoo series and we're going to do a habitat today that goes into um, it's gonna be a shared space with the Japanese macaques and the red crowned cranes they're both um, Japanese or Japanese Asian uh, animals and I'm, I'm super excited about the space I think it turned out just absolutely beautiful um, yeah, so we're continuing on with our wetlands. I know I've been kind of uh, MIA from YouTube for a hot minute. Um, a lot of life stuff has happened. A lot of things have changed. Um, I'm kind of getting back on the horse as far as getting organized and getting things back together and getting back to video creations. So thank you for everyone who's come into stream to say hello or who has dropped into Discord just to say hey. Um, and you know, even those that have mentioned they've missed me a bit, I do appreciate. I appreciate all the love I can, I've, I've gotten since um, just everything's been a little wonky, a little topsy turvy. <laughs> so um, this space, I, it took me a minute to figure out what exactly I wanted to do. Um, I will say I did this on stream, and I think I deleted and redid. We kept reopening the save file because um, I couldn't quite figure out exactly what I wanted to do. Like I had ideas, but they weren't quite working the way I wanted. Um, and then finally it just kind of dawned on me. I'm like, I know what I want. This is supposed to be a wetlands con continuation. They're all supposed to tie together. Hence all the rock work um, being very similar and being um, very, um, you know, uh, cohesive. I was like, let's do a waterfall. Let's do a really pretty waterfall going from one habitat to the next, but making sure that we keep um, the rocks intact enough to keep the, the habitat divide, which can be a little tricky if you've never done it before. Uh, but it's just more of a, like taking some of the foliage and some of the rocks and just kind of moving them around and making it all work. Um, yeah, so that's what we're gonna see here. And then you guys are going to see basically how I planned out kind of a, almost like a spa day for the animals, uh, which was really fun to do. Um, and I, I really like the coloration of the rocks, how I've kind of basically included almost every shade of rock there is, because I think that's kind of fun. <laughs> and I think, um, you know, as rocks sit in water or experience water, they do tend to change colors based on their sediments and based on um, their time in the water. Sometimes they get um, the, the algae growing on it and sometimes they're fresh and clean depending on how fast the water runs and where the water lands. All those things just kind of came into my head as I was trying to plan out this waterfall. Um, we do have the option to put in pre-done waterfalls. They're, they're really neat little assets that came with, um, I can't remember which pack they came with. I think they might have came with the water pack that we got. Um, I'm not positive if that's the one it came with, but I know we have a pack that came with the waterfall builds. I did not do that today. Today I actually uh, made my own waterfall um, using the um, water features tools that we have. Um, the trick to waterfalls is kind of placing the barriers and the straightaways for the water to stay in, but also for the areas to stay kind of hidden, but also be exposed. I know it sounds super strange saying it that way, but it's like you want the water to be seen, but you also don't want that illusion of, um, the rock work, I'm sorry, the illusion of the glass breaking the feel of the waterfall. So um, I, I do wish that we could use rocks as barriers instead of having to use things like this. Um, and it, I think that's my only wish with uh, Planet Zoo is they would allow us to use rocks as water gap stops so that we could really just create you know, the most unique water structures. But that being said, if you're creative and you kind of think outside the box, you can definitely lower the glass and such to the height of the water. 
um, and then you just use rock work to kind of hide um, anything that happens to overlap or lay over it and it, it is a technique you kind of get better at and I, I know there are some that are probably ten times better at it than I am um, I do not by any stretch of the imagination claim to be the best as far as the waterfalls go <laughs> but I'm decent at it you know I've gotten to the point where I'm happy with the way my waterfalls work and I think that's the major main thing about Planet Zoo I know uh, I have people that come in the stream or they hang out with me and they're like you're so good I can never be that good and I, I just want to say yes you can you can be as better than me you can be as good as you want to be or as good as you say you are because at the end of the day we all have different processes and different thoughts and different different ways of finding things beautiful um like for instance i know some people don't find the rock work as pretty as i do i love the rock work i think it's beautiful and unique and a really fun way to express um breaks in you know in the world um and some people just are not huge fans of rock work i think rock work makes planet zoo run <laughs> rock work makes planet zoo makes the planet zoo world go around <laughs> um this is me laying the first part of the hot springs i was trying to decide if i wanted it kind of deep in areas if i wanted it fully deep if i wanted like a little mini lake what exactly I wanted and when I realized I wasn't quite getting the look I was going for I decided to completely flatten the area because you know when you when you're not getting what you want like when you're writing a story or when you're making a painting if you're not getting what you want it's easy you just go back to the beginning you just restart it and um, you re-sculpt and you basically just kind of st it's not necessarily starting over but it's starting with a fresh piece of canvas in a way I mean, I didn't ditch the entire build, but I did flatten out the area where the water was going to be in and reset it. Also, um, you guys know I was gone for a minute. This is actually right after the Wetlands Pack came out. Um, it, it had only been out for maybe a couple weeks at this point. Um, so, you know, still, I was still in the baby stages with the Wetlands. And um, I hate that I took that period of time off because I feel like, uh, you know, like that moment of this is new, it's a little bit lost on some people. It was still new to me, so I was still getting used to it. Um, but you know, that's what happens. This is a trick I learned from um, one of my creator friends is to take those pieces of wood and you can basically measure how tall you need something to be from one area to the other. You will see that I placed the wood over in the water area and then I came over and placed it in this area so I could see how deep I needed um, the pathway to run. Um, it's, a, it's, a, it's a neat little trick in my opinion. I, I like it a lot. Um, it lets me, helps me with elevations. It helps me figure out if I'm tunneling through something. It helps me figure out where I need to put the pathing or where I need to come up or down. Um, it, it helps me with tunneling a lot. It makes tunneling a lot easier, in my opinion, to do it that way. Um, I think everybody kind of has their own little tricks of the trade when it comes to this pathing. Um, I discovered it was it was going where I wanted it to go as far as height goes, but it was not going where I wanted it to go as far as connection goes. So I had to redo that part. Um, once I did, um, it's just a matter of getting other things to connect and uh yeah and then that's pretty much it just making it clean at that point in time um and then i decided to go back to the uh drawing board and try to figure out what i wanted because i knew i put a tunnel there and i figured i would tie it together and make it kind of look just like the platypus area so instead of coming up for a walkway there they would instead follow it all the way around and come up over here instead. So it's kind of like um, going down and under to see the platypuses as well as the macaques and um, the cranes. And it also, I decided to do the glass topping as well so that the animals could run over the top of where people were underneath in the tunnel. So you could basically look up and 
see, you know, cute little monkey butts or whatever, um, monkey tails flailing about. You can see them playing above you. Um, which if anybody's ever gone to a zoo and has had that experience, um, I've done that with penguins and it was really, really cool because I got to watch them playing and um, being silly with each other and I got to watch it above me. So it was definitely a unique view. Um, so I thought I would do that for this little area here. I thought it tied it together, made it a very cohesive space, especially when you're in a zoo. Um, I mean, honestly, they probably were in an actual zoo, it would have been all been planned at the same time and it would have just been placed separate, like at the same time versus separately the way I did it. But you know, the thought is there, the idea is there. This is me just smoothing things out because, um, we're going to have um, habitat breaks and the habitat breaks I would need, you have to kind of have like this path over the breaks, otherwise they don't connect. And I know that probably sounds really strange, but that's just part of the game mechanic. Um, in a perfect world, I would just draw it wherever I wanted to and not have to worry about the connections. But um, game mechanics are there for a reason. You can finagle them sometimes, but you can't always change everything you want to. So uh, when you realize something isn't connecting, you have to kind of go backwards, create that path again, maybe smooth something out, maybe you missed a connector, and then you try again. <laughs> so I smoothed it out, I redid that part, and then I drew it again. Now, some people, when they're doing their their video edits will delete all of that out and just show you the pretty parts I really think to learn and so you can see kind of where my thought process was as well as you know nobody's perfect um, we all do these things it's all kind of trial and error sometimes or sometimes you'll see something in your mind and you'll want it to happen and it won't happen um, I, and, and trust me I've gotten to the point of wanting to just give up on it <laughs> But if you just rethink it, kind of go back to the drawing board and start from square one, sometimes you can figure it out. Um, so I'm happy I did go back to square one on that one because it ended up looking really good. Um, and of course glass in the game is a little bit weird sometimes and habitat, um, you know, uh, barriers and borders and stuff. These are going to get moved several times throughout the game, you'll, or throughout this recording, you'll see that. Um, yep, I'm just creating a viewing space for the um, visitors and a space for water to basically stop up at the edge. And this is going to be less of a diving spot like the platypi were and more like a hot springs, little shallow water area. Um, yeah, I think it really turned out cute. It really turned out great because the cranes and the macaques aren't really divers, so to speak. They're more like lounge lizards in the in the in the like in the hot springs. So they're getting in the hot tub and they're just chilling versus diving deep down into the water and you know um, like the platypi are. So and this is me checking the hot water recordings and making sure they're going to the right place because um, even though they um, they are wintry type creatures they have to have hot water um, that I don't can't recall when that was added to the game but um, the hot water heaters are really really cool and uh, yep just matching themes for the different buildings that I'm putting in um, I put this one in specific like this. I didn't bar it all the way in so the mechanics could still get to the front, but it runs with the theme so that if anybody were to peek in or see something, they would just see similar buildings to everywhere else. Um, this is me just putting in some hand fencing, which will get slightly amended as time progresses. Um, but yeah, it's, I think this is a really fun build. Fences can be tricky because um, you have this strong desire to just want to copy paste them all so you don't have to do one little individual fence piece at a time, but there are always paths that curve a little bit or move a little bit. 
um, or rocks that move or sometimes you might have to put a rock in place to get it to work for you versus against you so and I kind of thought trying to go with the theme of the the mud huts that I would um, stick these in and add parts around it almost like it was planned in a way to um, the, the habitats or maybe even the um, employee areas were already there and maybe to save money for the zoo actually for definitely saving money for the zoo you guys will see our money fluctuating a lot over this period because you guys have already seen me hit hit zero and negative a few times um, trying to save a little bit of cash and not just uh, rebuild an entire area but instead build around an area um, saved us some money um, yeah, and this is just getting out, getting the entrance to the zoo set up, and getting it just right to where it doesn't look too off, um, making it all cohesive and tie together, but also at the same time keeping the stuff in order or stuff in line. Um, yeah. And then it's all going to go back to the beginning and all match up with the original pieces. You guys are going to see me turn, start turning those hedges into um, the null barriers as we go along because I don't need them to be the hedges. The hedges was literally just so I could make out where the habitat lines were so that as I was building the the structures, the buildings on the outside, I could kind of follow a pathing instead of trying to find the invisible um, lines that the habitats are. So um, it's a little trick I have because um, it's cheaper, it's easy, and they're very bright and easy to see. <laughs> see, more no barriers. And then it's just a matter of getting them beyond the mud walls because the mud walls the are tall enough to where the creatures cannot jump over them or climb over them because uh, they're not a climbable object. And then when you do stuff like this you do have to kind of do backwards thinking and uh, just go back and check your lines and make sure everything's where it's supposed to be because you don't want to have an escapee um, like or an announcement of an escapee when they haven't actually escaped but because the computer borders are outside of are inside of where they live you technically have an escapee I know it's kind of it's a little weird but you get used to it playing this game you get used to it and that's all the adjustments so after those adjustments are done um, we go back to laying rock work around what is going to be our waterfall and this is going to be when I actually put the waterworks in, I think. Um, this is where I do that, pretty darn sure, yep, there they go. And then this is just water effects, you're going to have the different water effects you can use to make it look like it's crashing over the, the, the rocks in place, to give it a downward motion, to definitely give it that waterfall feel. Um, when people think of waterfalls, they almost always think of the free-flowing, one-stream waterfalls. But in all actuality, a lot of waterfalls are just spurts that happen around rocks. Um, so I played around with it until it looked good, um, which when you make it yourself, it can take a little bit of playing. Um, I also wanted to make sure the rock work didn't look like it was just thrown in there. Uh, so I, I adjusted a lot of that and moved a lot of that. And, tried to make it look like it all was cohesive. And then this is just going to be me placing a bunch of waterfall bits and pieces. So one thing I've always struggled with, um, or struggled with a lot when I first started playing, was basically not doing all flat 
habitats and doing um, basically elevation changes and elevation differentiation. Um, one of my community members, uh, Pippi, uh, always said, well, why don't you make it a little bit bigger or, or taller or, you know, put some hills in, you know, it doesn't have to be flat. And, and I, I always was like, wait, what? <laughs> until I realized uh, they were right. Um, he was just trying to help me be a better creator. And um, I will tell you that taking a flat space and even just putting a few bumps and a few like um, movements or a few waves in the ground can change so much when it comes uh, to your habitat, to where your animals live and stay. Because if you think about it, um, you know, when you're out taking a walk or you're doing something outside, how often is the grass or the dirt or whatever completely flat, like everywhere you walk? It's not. So um, I really appreciate that help and that feedback as I was uh, becoming uh, better at um, this game and building better habitats and habitats that were more realistic. And um, this part that I'm building right now is going to change a little bit in the future. Um, pathing can always be a real struggle. It is something that can um, really complicate your world sometimes. And the other thing I really wish they would change about this game is our ability to put benches anywhere we want to. Um, having to put them at the edges of um, paths kind of it does drive me a little bit crazy every now and again. I really wish I could just choose to put them wherever I want to because, you know, uniqueness, sometimes fun. <laughs> um, rock building, I know I said this earlier, um, not everybody loves it, but I will tell you, you love it more and it becomes more part of your habitat. It becomes more naturalistic. If you flip it and move it and change it and just kind of find little tweaks to make it a little bit different, and never be afraid to copy and paste some because honestly there's so many rocks hardly anyone is going to notice the copy and paste unless someone is really staring super super hard and they're like wait a minute those rocks are kind of in a similar pattern but i guarantee you um most people won't care or won't notice <laughs> um so rock work is um something that is big but it's also something that is very useful in the game it can really create a lot of texture a lot of differentiation it can also really help with that um the the elevation changes that i was talking about earlier um it also really brings the eye to something other than all the basic um technical stuff around you like the pathing and and um stuff like that and it also makes it to where uh kind of gives a natural break to where people are walking or where people are are traveling from one point to another um this area the wetlands area i really wanted to do a lot of, of rock work so we're gonna see quite a bit of that as as i finish up the wetlands um not this video but probably the next video will be my last wetlands video um crossing fingers and toes uh, i think the next video is going to be the capybara so yeah so we're polishing this up i did start the capybara habitat which you can probably actually see it kind of in the background every now and again uh, but i did not finish it because it's like i started and then my inspiration kind of started drying up a bit on it and i I didn't want to finish that habitat without feeling completely in the zone inspired. Um, so I, I had inspiration for this specific habitat. So I was like, let's go for this. Let's finish this up and um, they will, we'll revisit the capybaras. Uh, yeah, so just kind of uh, doing some rock work and finishing this up. And then we're going to move on to the overarching bridgeway that's gonna be here and but rock work is 100% um, a lot of this build because it just makes this, it ties this build together in my opinion. It really puts a nice ribbon on it. It makes it feel complete and look complete. It's a matter of making sure the rocks aren't sticking out too far too because <laughs> uh, I'm thinking like as a visitor, would you really want to smack your head on one of these rocks? So uh, yeah, that's one of the things you have to really keep, uh, I guess, keep an eye on, keep a thought process on while you're putting all this stuff out here is where would the rocks actually be and making sure it's nice and smooth and the walkways are relatively clear and then I, I didn't want any of this 
curbing to show up um, on these paths. I really wanted the natural feel, so I covered up all the curbs on the rock wall side. Because uh, that side, I really wanted it to feel like just a wall of nothing but rocks. And I think I really accomplished that. So um, I'm actually rather proud of this build. And uh, perfecting rocks is always fun. <laughs> I do promise though the rock work is worth it. It's 100% something that just ties together your zoo. If if you're into rock work, if if not, um, you know, foliage is also something that can really tie together your zoo really, really well. It's just filling out the blank spaces. Um, you don't have to have every blank space filled out uh, at by any stretch of the imagination, but when you're trying to create like a walkway where you know people are going to be coming through and viewing animals and spending time, um, I really find that it's at least important to me to fill that area out, to make it something that people are going to um, either see and remember or see and just feel immersed and not um, necessarily have a memory about that location, but feel more like they're inside the habitat, uh, one with the animal. Um, these walkways I think are so fun and so neat. Um, just being able to walk over them, I'm sorry, walk under them and see the animals walking over them is what I meant to say. Um, and then just, you know, it, I think it's a really fun addition to um, to this part of the zoo. And uh, the, the walkways are a little complex because you have to make sure the animals can't escape, like walk over them, but you also want to make sure that um, that you have the habitat enclosures and breaks in proper places so that when the animals are walking across they're not coming out of the habitat boundaries um yeah so it's all kinds of interesting fun things so kind of poking like uh, kind of glancing in advance a little bit kind of right where i was placing um that glass there's i'm, I'm actually going to put a restaurant there um, I'm not fantabulous at restaurants yet, but it's something I'm working on because I want to perfect um, the way restaurants work and make them look really good. So I figured the best way to do that is to go ahead and add more. Add more restaurants. Do more restaurants. <laughs> Can't get good at something if you're not willing to give it a try. Um, rock work, I think, is, is something else that makes um, like wet areas, areas where they're going to be wading or kind of stepping in. If I had just left it as dirt and water, it would have looked a little um, just unfinished. So I added rock, but I didn't go crazy. I didn't want a complete rock wall, but I did want some little touches to where um, it looked more natural and little places where what if the animals didn't want to specifically go in the water or what if they wanted to get out of the water, they could climb on top of the rock and sit on it and dry off in the sun or something like that. I've seen plenty of animals do the drying off in the sun situation. Um, and this is just me putting in some rock detail on the siding. Uh, this is before I get all of the foliage in, which really frames all of this very nicely once I get it going. Um, the waterfall is kind of the last thing I'm doing because waterfall building is not my forte. <laughs> it's something that I think is very important and something I think that makes um, habitats really pretty um, or zoos really pretty specifically, but it's not something I am amazing at. So it took me a few tries to get this to look good. I kept having to delete and re-put the pieces in. Um, and then you'll even notice that I started it early, earlier on in the video and I kind of just, when, when it starts to frustrate me, I put it away. It's kind of like, um, kind of like when you're doing some artwork or when you're, when I'm writing one of my books, if, if I'm having a hard time with a plot point or with, with tying together my idea from my head into my final revision, then I'll just put the book down for a minute or put the, you know, put the computer away for a little bit. I'll go out and do some gardening or I'll read or I will play Planet Zoo or I'll just do something other than write. Um, and that's what I did with this waterfall. I was like, okay, I need a break from the waterfall because it's starting to frustrate me. And when you're playing a game, you know, you don't want to be frustrated. <laughs> you want to have fun and you want to have a good time and you don't want to think about how frustrated you are at a specific thing. Uh, so I always recommend walking away if it's driving you absolutely bonkers. Um, 
I started getting the pieces working the way I wanted to. It is in fast forward um, on this video, so it looks like it's a little bit faster than it's actually going. So uh, yeah, so that's my tip for the day. If something's frustrating you, walk away, come back later. And um, you know, your vision, I would say 90% of the time can be accomplished if you are willing to just kind of see it through. So once you get all the animals in, it is time to check escape points. Um, if you don't know how to do that, you get the animals in and then you click on one of the animals um, that you're checking to uh, for escape, like if they can escape, and you click H, like you hit the H button, um, and then of course you hit the second one to the uh, from the left, which is the one that's highlighted right now, and you can see um, what the escape points are. You want to pause it while you're fixing the boundaries and while you're fixing the, the habitat or whatever, but you're going to have to press play after you've adjusted to see if you've fixed the escape points. Um, it can get a little tricky because the animals are in there and if they catch on, there's still escape points. Sometimes they can book it to those escape points. <laughs> um, so keep an eye out while you're adjusting and fixing things just to make sure that if you see a wild animal coming your way, you can pause it, grab that animal, and then move them to the other side of the habitat so they have to work at booking it back to your escape point again. Um, yeah, I've done that many, many times. So this is just some adjusting and trying to make sure that all the escape points are taken care of and that my animals cannot escape. <laughs> and sometimes when you make custom fencing or custom walls, you have to remember that some of these animals, like the monkeys, can climb wooden structures. So um, I was putting basically a barrier across the top to see if that would stop the um, escape route. And it pretty much did for the most part, but um, it still left kind of a question mark on it. So I brought in some other type of fencing for the back side, um, which is the side away from where the viewers will be seeing the monkeys. And I, I still think it looks really good. I have no issue with it. So I took off those um, partitions and then put these in, uh, adjusted them appropriately so they looked nice from the back side and then put them all over the fencing. And that pretty much fixed the rest of our escape issues. Um, sometimes when I have a shared habitat, I will forget to check escape issues for both animals. So um, yeah, always double check both species or all three species or how many, many species you have in your habitat just to make sure <laughs> that it all works cohesively. Um, and you know, it, 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 it is a little bit of work to get all that fencing back up again. If I had thought about the climbing issue from the beginning, I could have put those behind the fences as I put them in. Um, you know, sometimes it happens. Sometimes best laid plans are not always, uh, they don't always work to the, to the, the way you want them to. And then sometimes you just got to adjust a little bit but it still looks really, really good. I'm still really happy with the way this turned out. Um, and just a little bit of adjusting on the habitat walls. And then we are ready to just kind of double check the rest of the creatures, put in some more um, enrichment items. And it really, it really is coming along nicely, I think. Now these pipes I think are really, really cool um, because it kind of has like water that dribbles out of it and it allows your animals to drink from it if they so choose, which I swear the first time I see a monkey drinking from that, I'm gonna just completely lose my marbles because I think it's gonna be the cutest thing ever, like ever, ever, ever. Um, and then these gazebo um, basically have it like sleeping areas that I created I think are just really great I think they tie all the spaces together using them in each space um, really allows me to tie them together to make it look like it all is cohesive and um, it's all kind of like a group habitat but separate habitats at the same time um, so that is why I chose to use this again this is gonna be one of the sleeping areas I'm gonna put some bedding in there um, I think it's going to really turn out great. Right now I'm just kind of poking around to make sure everything's the way it's supposed to be. And then I thought, you know, over in the water area on the opposite side, it'd be nice to have kind of an area where they can lounge out, maybe a little jetties or something. 
um, which I put together to be kind of like a dock instead of uh, just jetties. And I gave them a little bit of shelter and some sleeping areas. So uh, it's kind of like their own little personal um, spa cave, I guess is the best way to put it. Uh, yep, yeah. and then it's just a matter of kind of rounding the edges out and getting it all perfect And I love this little sanctuary that I gave them. It's almost like a little cave Then we're gonna kind of go backwards and um, work on getting education um, basically signs that tell them what the animals are and Trying to find good strategic locations to place them where they look like they make sense um, This is something I typically forget all the time in my habitats. Um, never feel bad if you forget about the education. Just keep an eye on your readings, um, your star readings and stuff like that, just to make sure that you have education throughout your park. Um, and I always recommend if you're finishing up like habitat areas or you know, you're trying to wrap up an entire section of your zoo, like this wetlands area, um, when I get done with this wetlands area, I am going to check all of my uh, my different filters which using H you can check them just to make sure we don't have any negative stuff for guests to make sure we have education in all the areas and to make sure that each animal's habitat is set up nicely just the way they want because it's kind of like going back and double checking when you're done with the entire area because sometimes when you're building a habitat next to another habitat you can accidentally mess up like the the the, the surroundings or the uh, the, uh, the the soil that goes in there and if it just goes off by a little bit it can sometimes really mess up your animals um and then just kind of finishing touches i didn't like this feeding pool just being out there blank space like that so i surrounded it by some rocks because i thought it would really accentuate and make the area pop especially since there's a lot of rocks in all of these habitats anyway i didn't think it made it look out of place uh, by putting it like this uh, you can do it with foliage you can also do it with um with dirt you can do it with anything and then i just stuck a rock kind of in the middle to make it kind of all tie together and um yeah so i hope you guys really like this habitat i had a lot of fun making it i think it turned out really really good um i'm satisfied so i hope you guys like it let me know what you think and I'm now back on track with my streaming schedule as well as my, as well as my YouTube um, editing and processing schedule. So you should see a lot more coming from me. So please check it out. I hope you guys liked it. Please subscribe. Thank you so much for coming. Uh, ring that bell. Um, all those really cool YouTube things. And I'll catch you guys in the next one.